Kaiman. This is the very first gate in the eight inner gate system, the gate of opening. It's not just a regular ninja technique, it's honestly a super cool idea that even connects with modern neuroscience. In Naruto, the gate of opening is located on the left side of the brain. Well, Kishimoto actually thought it through quite a bit. In science, the left brain is known for controlling logic, language, and organized thinking. But more importantly, it's where the brain's natural safety brakes are. Did you know? Most people only use about 30% of their real physical strength at most. That's because the brain constantly sends signals to hold you back, just to protect your muscles and bones from injury. But sometimes, in life or death moments, these brakes get turned off. One famous real-life case happened in 1982. A mom named Angela Cavallo saw her son trapped under a car while he was fixing it. No one else was around, and the car was crushing him. In a crazy moment of desperation, Angela, a regular middle-aged woman, somehow lifted the entire car just enough for the neighbors to pull her son out. She couldn't lift it again afterward. This kind of moment is known as an adrenaline surge, when your brain temporarily removes all limits to help you survive. The eight gates work kinda like that, but way more controlled. A ninja trains to break past those limits and activate superhuman strength whenever they want, not just in panic mode. When a ninja opens the first gate, they remove mental blocks like fear, self-doubt, and hesitation. This unlocks a rush of hormones like adrenaline and norepinephrine, the stuff your body releases when it's under stress. The result? Their reaction speed jumps up because signals travel faster in the nerves. Their strength increases because the muscles contract more powerfully. And their focus improves since the mind clears out all the negative thoughts. This gate can actually open by accident in super intense situations. One great example is Kakashi. He once accidentally activated the gate of opening while climbing a mountain with just one hand. That perfectly shows how this gate connects to the body's natural emergency system. Honestly, maybe that mom Angela Cavallo we mentioned earlier also unknowingly opened this gate too. This is also why the gate of opening is considered the safest gate out of all eight inner gates. It only uses the strength that your body already has, the kind you could naturally use in life or death moments. In Naruto, the most famous move tied to this gate is the front lotus, a flashy and intense move that Rock Lee used to amaze everyone in his fight with Gara. First, Lee kicks the opponent high into the air with a powerful strike. Then, he follows them up, using the bandages on his arms to wrap them up tightly. Finally, he starts spinning at super high speed to build centrifugal force before slamming the opponent straight into the ground. But here's the thing. That crazy spinning speed can actually make the opponent fly off, so Lee needs a kind of safety rope to keep the move under control. After using the front lotus, the user becomes super tired and wide open for counterattacks. That's why Might Guy told Lee to never use this move unless it was for something truly important, because it takes a heavy toll on the body. There's a fun little detail in the anime. Later on, Lee manages to use Front Lotus without putting so much strain on himself. That totally fits the theory that once your body gets used to a certain level of stress, it adapts and no longer treats it as something too extreme. The gate of opening is the first step on the journey to unlock your true potential. It shows us that the biggest limits in life are often in our own minds. But once you break past your mental limits, your body needs a way to keep up with that new power. And that's exactly where the second gate comes in. Kyumon. If the first gate is all about breaking mental limits, then the second gate focuses on something just as important, healing and recovery. Kyumon, or the gate of healing, is located on the right side of the brain. This part of the brain controls physical movement, emotions, and the body's natural recovery systems. When a ninja opens the second gate, they trigger a really powerful process we can call regenerative overdrive. Basically, the body starts rapidly producing more ATP. That's the main energy fuel for your cells. At the same time, it also speeds up the removal of lactic acid and other waste that builds up in the muscles. That's why this gate helps the ninja recover super fast, even if they were already exhausted. In real life, our bodies also have built-in healing systems. For example, when we sleep, the brain activates something called the glymphatic system, which cleans out harmful proteins and recharges energy. 
The gate of healing works kind of like that, but while you're still awake, which makes it feel almost unnatural, like a cheat code for recovery. What's interesting is that this gate doesn't have a flashy technique like the front lotus from the first gate. Instead, it works more like a booster system that powers up your whole body and lets you fight harder for longer. That's why Rock Lee often uses the gate of healing as a setup move, to get ready for more complex and high-level techniques. From a strategy point of view, the gate of healing shows off the sustainable combat style of taijutsu. Unlike ninjutsu or genjutsu, which can sometimes end a fight with just one move, taijutsu is all about endurance and being able to fight at full power for a long time. And the gate of healing is exactly what makes that possible. Now, in the Naruto world, we don't fully know the side effects of this gate. It's still kind of a mystery, but based on real biology, forcing your body to recover that quickly would probably burn through your long-term energy reserves. It's like drinking tons of energy drinks to pull an all-nighter. Sure, you feel awake for a while, but you'll definitely crash hard afterward. Still, if the gate of healing is the key to surviving long fights, then the next gate takes us somewhere completely different, a place where power and speed hit superhuman levels, and the risks start getting real. Let's move on to Simon. The third gate, Simon, or the gate of life, is located at the top of the spine. And honestly, this is where everything starts to get serious in battle. Biologically, when the gate of life is opened, the ninja's blood circulation increases massively. Blood gets pumped at super high speed and pressure, way beyond normal. This makes the user's skin turn bright red, almost like they're glowing. Their veins bulge, their hair stands on end from the crazy energy, and even their pupils disappear, all signs that the body is pushing itself way past its natural limits. The true strength of the gate of life is in how it boosts speed and reflexes to nearly superhuman levels. At this stage, the user can move so fast that even elite ninja can barely keep up. But of course, there's a price. Once the gate closes, the body will be completely drained. The user might pass out or even collapse from exhaustion. It's a huge risk. Interestingly, the gate of life is seen as the line between dangerous and still manageable in the eight gate system. The next gate will push everything even further into a place where power and pain go hand in hand. Shoman. The fourth gate, Shoman, or the gate of pain, is located lower down along the spine. This is the point where the eight gate system shifts from just boosting power to actually damaging the body. The name says it all, gate of pain. When this gate is opened, the muscle fibers literally start tearing apart because they can't handle the insane pressure. Tiny blood vessels burst, and the user may start bleeding from the nose or even the mouth. These are clear warning signs that the body is getting seriously hurt on the inside. Unlike the earlier gates that just made you tired, this one actually begins to break your body down. Still, the power it gives is absolutely terrifying. When paired with the gate of pain, the reverse lotus becomes even more brutal. It's not just faster, it hits way harder strong enough to break through powerful and even flexible defenses. We saw this during Rock Lee's fight with Gara. Thanks to the power of the fourth gate, Lee's reverse lotus was finally able to smash through Gara's sand armor, and for the first time in the battle, Lee actually did real damage to him. One small detail worth noting, Lee's nosebleed when he opened the gate of pain wasn't just for dramatic effect. It was a very real sign that his body was already breaking down from the inside. That blood is the body's way of saying, you've gone too far. From this point on, every second you keep the gate open could cause permanent damage. Toman. Toman, or the gate of limit, is located around the lower back, along the lumbar spine. This gate isn't just another power boost. It marks the thin, dangerous line between greatness and destruction. When this gate is opened, the body's muscles contract explosively way, way beyond what a normal human could handle. The circulatory system goes into overdrive, pumping blood at an insane speed to bring more oxygen to the body's overloaded organs and muscles. This creates a massive burst of energy, but also puts the body on the edge of total collapse. This gate is not meant for long fights. It's designed for one final decisive attack, a moment to risk everything. That's why Rock Lee used this gate to perform the final strike of the Reverse Lotus, 
a move that demands so much strength from the user. When Lee opened the Gate of Limit, his speed and power skyrocketed, completely overwhelming Gara's automatic sand defense, something no one had ever broken through before. The speed and intensity of Lee's aerial attacks left the entire arena absolutely shocked. For the first time, a Genin, the lowest ninja rank, had pushed someone as powerful as Gara to the edge of defeat, but the cost was devastating. Right after the attack, Lee suffered severe bone fractures in both his arms and legs. These weren't just simple breaks, they were compound fractures, where the bones literally pierced through the skin. Worse, some bone fragments even got stuck near his spinal cord. This kind of injury nearly ended his career as a ninja. Well, all that was only because Lee was still young. Later, after the time skip and during the Fourth Great Ninja War, he was able to open up to the Sixth Gate without facing huge pressure or serious injuries like before. Kaiman The Sixth Gate, Kaiman, or the Gate of View, is located around the stomach area along the spine. Biologically, the Gate of View acts like a full-body turbo system. When activated, it synchronizes every system in the body. The circulatory system gets maxed out. The heart starts pumping at an unbelievable rate to send oxygen-rich blood to every single cell. At the same time, the central nervous system is heavily stimulated, which dramatically boosts reflexes and reaction speed. Together, this creates a state where the user moves so fast and processes information so quickly, it literally feels like time slows down. Mechanically, it works just like gates 2 through 5, just much, much stronger. The most obvious sign of this gate's power is the appearance of a green aura that surrounds the user's entire body. This glowing energy is so dense, it can physically push away things around it. Even water gets blown back when the user stands still. This is the first gate in the whole 8-gate system that visibly alters the environment, and it makes the user look absolutely unstoppable. The signature move of this gate is the Morning Peacock, a stunning example of high-speed taijutsu. The move works by throwing punches at incredible speeds, so fast that the air friction causes fire. The result is a giant fan-shaped explosion of flames, like the tail of a peacock, that rains down on the enemy. The heat is so intense, it can evaporate hundreds of Kisame's water sharks in a matter of seconds. Kyomon. The seventh gate in the eight-gate system is the Gate of Wonder, or Kyomon in Japanese. And let's be real, at this point, we're entering territory that only the most insane ninja would ever dare to reach. This gate is located just below the stomach, along the spine. When it's opened, it causes an extreme biological reaction inside the body. The metabolism speeds up wildly, raising the body's temperature to dangerous levels. The user starts sweating a bright blue liquid, which instantly evaporates into mist, creating a glowing steam cloud around their body. It looks so intense that some people might actually mistake it for pure chakra. Physically, the gate of wonder pushes every system in the body into extreme overdrive. The circulatory system has to pump blood at insanely high pressure. The heart beats hundreds of times per minute. The nervous system goes into overdrive, sending electrical signals so fast that reaction time becomes superhuman. But of course, all that power comes with a brutal cost. The muscle fibers start tearing at the microscopic level, and even simple physical contact causes intense, unbearable pain. This gate is called Wonder for a reason. It's a stage of power that feels almost mythical, but one wrong move, and your body might completely fall apart. The signature move of the Gate of Wonder is called Daytime Tiger, and it's honestly a total game changer in the world of Taijutsu. Unlike earlier moves that needed direct contact, Daytime Tiger is a long-range attack that relies purely on physical strength. No chakra tricks, just raw, explosive power. Here's how it works. The user compresses air into a single point using a powerful punch, then releases it in the shape of a roaring tiger. The shockwave it creates is insanely strong, it can cause massive explosions that you can feel from really far away. We saw just how powerful this technique is when Mike Guy used it against Kisame Hoshigaki, who was fused with Samihara at the time. Kisame is one of the most dangerous close-range fighters ever, with a huge amount of chakra and the ability to absorb energy from his enemies. 
he was seen as almost unstoppable. But when Guy unleashed Daytime Tiger, it took just one hit to completely shut Kisame down. That attack overpowered even an elite Akatsuki member, proving that there really are limits, even for monsters like him. Shimon. The eighth and final gate in the eight gate system is the Gate of Death, or Shimon in Japanese. This gate represents the absolute peak of what a human body can do in the Naruto world. Unlike the previous seven gates, which slowly remove the body's natural limits, the Gate of Death completely destroys all biological restraints. To activate it, the user stabs their thumb into their chest, and the heart begins to pump blood at its absolute max. The result is a flow of energy that's said to be a hundred times stronger than normal. When Mike Guy opened this gate, he became stronger than all five Kage combined. Normally, the human body has natural breaks to stop itself from using too much energy. But the Gate of Death removes those breaks entirely, forcing the body to run at 100% full power, non-stop. The cost? Blood begins to boil and evaporate, escaping through the skin as a red mist known as the Steam of Blood. This mist surrounds the user like a fiery aura, it's literally cooked blood. The body's temperature rises so insanely high that it actually starts to cook itself from the inside. In the end, the user's body may burn out completely and turn to ash. But with that terrifying power comes two forbidden techniques, moves that push taijutsu beyond anything we've ever seen. The first is Evening Elephant, a combo of five brutal punches, each one stronger than the last. These punches create shockwaves shaped like giant elephant feet, and even just the first one can leave a massive crater in the ground. The final blow is powerful enough to shatter a truth-seeking ball, one of the toughest defenses in the entire series. Night Guy is the ultimate taijutsu move, the strongest technique a human can possibly use. When it starts, the user releases an enormous wave of blood vapor, which is basically every last drop of life energy left in their body. That energy takes the form of a massive red dragon, coiling around them like a living flame. Then they launch forward with such insane speed that the space around them literally warps. The final kick carries enough power to completely erase the opponent's body from existence. This technique reached legendary status during the battle between Might Guy and Madara Uchiha in the Fourth Great Ninja War. At that point, Madara had become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, basically an unstoppable god. Every attack thrown at him had failed. But when Guy opened the Gate of Death, the battlefield shook with raw energy. For the first time, Madara admitted he was actually being challenged. He couldn't dodge Guy's attacks. He had to stand there and take them, completely overwhelmed by the speed and force. Another, more tragic story comes from Might Die, Guy's father. He was a Jainan his whole life, never promoted, never famous. But when his son and his teammates were cornered by the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, Dai didn't hesitate. He opened the gate of death and took down six of the seven legendary swordsmen all by himself. But his sacrifice wasn't just about power, it was a message. With enough willpower and love, even the so-called weakest ninja can rise up and do something legendary. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.